As far as I'm concerned, if someone were to ask me what OS is better in 2024 for customization purposes, the answer is still well and truly Android. The only issue is with so many brands of phones and apps available on the Google Play Store, it can be a little hard to know where to even start. And so for today's video, I'm gonna showcase 20 different apps across six different levels of customization, all of which will make you a certified pro at customizing your Android phone. We're gonna start with the basics and work our way up to some seriously complex levels of customization. So without further ado, let's get customizing. All right, the very first most basic step in the customization process is to simply change up your phone's wallpaper. So with that in mind, let's start with some wallpaper related apps. Now I've seen a lot of people using either the default wallpapers provided by their phone manufacturer or sometimes photos that they've taken themselves and that's all well and good but if you're interested in creating a super clean or unique looking home screen then you'll definitely want to look into using a wallpaper from a dedicated wallpaper application. This will not only mean that you're getting a wallpaper that is unique, but perhaps more importantly, the wallpapers that are offered by these sorts of apps are usually crafted to suit your phone's home screen really well and that they're not super busy or cluttered, which would otherwise make it hard to see the app icons and widgets on your home screen. And so if you are looking for a place to find amazing yet unique wallpapers, well then might I suggest that you look no further than this fantastic wallpaper app called One for Wall. This is an app that is filled to the brim with over 1400 AI generated and hand edited wallpapers. And I've got to say, every single one of them looks seriously incredible. Using one of the wallpapers from this app alone will seriously level up the look of your home screen, even if this is the only thing that you change about it. But let's say you've got a favorite wallpaper that you love using, but you get a new phone and you want to transfer that wallpaper over. How do you go about doing that without spending hours sifting through an app that you think you might have got it from? Well, you can use an app called Get Current Wallpaper. As the name implies, this app simply lets you save whatever your phone's current wallpaper is, which you can then share to your new phone, easy as you like. And then let's say you wanna take your wallpaper customization up another level again, then how about having your phone automatically change its wallpaper based on your phone's system theme or the time of day? Well, that's where dual wallpaper comes in. With this app, you can do exactly that. And it even lets you set independent lock screen and home screen wallpapers if you like too. All right, from there, we move to our next phase of customization, custom map icons. Most stock home screen launchers use pretty plain looking icons. And so using custom third party icon packs can be a really simple way to make your home screen look just that little bit cleaner and more unique. Now there are hundreds, potentially even thousands of amazing icon packs available on the Play Store. However, before we get to that, let's first talk about how to go about even applying these icon packs in the first place. A lot of phones these days let you use third-party icon packs natively like Oxygen and ColorOS or Nothing OS. Even Samsung phones let you do it through the use of the Good Lock module. But if your phone doesn't natively support the feature, then there are a few ways to get around it. The first is by using an app like Shortcut Creator to create custom widgets that act as shortcuts to your favorite apps. With the app installed, you just long press your home screen, tap on widgets, search for the Shortcut Creator app, then select and drag this widget option to your home screen. From there, we just tap on application, select the app we're wanting to create a shortcut to, then we can tap the icon here, select from themes, then select the icon pack that we wanna use. Find the app icon and select it. Then for an even cleaner home screen, I'm gonna replace the name of the app here with just a space. Then I'll tap this phone icon up here and there we go. The only issue with this method is that it restricts you to the home screen grid sizing options offered by your phone's launcher. So that's where you can instead use an app called App Bar. Again, to use this app, you need to long press your home screen, tap on widgets, then find and drag the app bar widget to your home screen. Then from there, you just follow the instructions to add apps to the widget and then customize them however you like. But then if you increase this widget column setting, you're then able to essentially fake a wider horizontal grid size for your home screen. Once you're done, you just tap on place on home screen, then on add to home screen. And there you go, we've now got more apps horizontally here than what the launcher allows for by default. And this is actually the method that I use on my Pixel 8 Pro and Nothing Phone 2 to pull off this app configuration that you're looking at right now. But if you're looking for some actual icon pack recommendations, then I've got two that I'm loving at the moment. The first is actually my very own icon pack called Drops, which is filled with beautiful, tiny little icons that have this soft, 
pastel colorway, which is a look that I'm kind of obsessed with. What's really cool about this pack is that if your launcher supports it, then it also has a fantastic masking system built in, which means any unthemed apps become small to match and therefore don't stick out like a sore thumb. And then another fantastic icon pack I've loved using over the years is this one called the Crayon Icon Pack. Aside from the amazing design of the icons, the fact that this pack also supports over 6,000 icons at the time of making this video is simply amazing. Well worth it if you're looking for some more traditionally sized icons. And then if you wanna take things a stage further, then you can actually really easily create your own custom icon packs using an app called Icon Pack Studio. You just use the advanced editor to adjust your icons as much as you like, then you export the pack and install it just as you would any other third-party icon pack, and that's it. Okay, moving to level three in our six levels of customization, and this is where we're gonna dive into the world that is widgets. You can, of course, long press your phone's home screen to view the default widgets supported by your phone's launcher and any apps that you have installed, but for me, the real fun comes when you start tinkering with custom widgets. And the very best app for this is an application called KWGT. And I've featured this app on my channel a number of times now, but the reason for that is because, no joke, out of every customization app I use, this is the one I use the most often. Now you can use this app to create your own custom made widgets from scratch, but in all honesty, the best way to use this app is to actually sift through the hundreds of pre-made KWGT widget packs available on the Play Store. Many you can even get for free, and then using those to create these beautiful looking custom made widgets within seconds. With that being said, KWGT can be a little bit complex if you're just getting started. So another more entry level option with plenty of customization options is this one here called Widget. This app is filled with a huge collection of widgets to choose from. And what's amazing is that when you select a widget that you like, the app will then give you a range of customization options that'll help you to make the widgets suit your home screen perfectly. And just before we finish up discussing widgets, there is one extra widget app that I wanted to quickly mention, which is this one here called Folder in Folder. The app's main purpose is that it actually lets you create a widget that acts as a folder to your favorite apps. And you might be thinking, hang on Sam, my phone already lets me create folders. And whilst that is of course correct, there's no way to create folders using the custom made widget icons that we created earlier. Plus most phones also don't let you customize the folder icon itself as well. But because Folder in Folder is an application itself, I can actually go back and use the Shortcut Creator app to create a custom icon, which opens the Folder in Folder app, which means I now have a custom folder icon that opens a folder with all of my custom icons in it as well. How good's that? All right, let's take a slight detour away from home screen customization for a minute and talk about keyboard customization, which is what I'm calling customization level four. The stock Google Keyboard app, which most phones use by default, it offers a bunch of themes natively, which is super neat. But if you wanna level up your keyboard customization even further, then there's a couple of really great third-party apps worth checking out. The first is this app called Keys Cafe. This app actually just essentially replicates a good lock module found on Samsung phones. So if you are using a Samsung phone, just use the module instead. But both the module and the app offer a huge range of custom keyboard themes to choose from. And you can even create your own themes if you like. But what I think takes this app and the module from being cool to being downright amazing are these animated themes here. Install one of these themes for your keyboard and I guarantee it'll help your phone to feel incredibly unique and downright cool. But then let's say you wanna customize the actual functionality of your phone's keyboard, then look no further than the app Keyboard Designer. This app also lets you create or even import custom keyboard themes, which is pretty cool. However, the best feature of this app is that it lets you customize not only the position of the keys, but even how they function. So for example, you can set it up so that a specific app opens after long pressing the letter Z, or you can activate voice typing simply by swiping up. The options are nearly endless. But coming back now to home screen customization, and let's say your phone's stock default launcher is starting to feel a little too limited for your liking. Well, if that's the case, then it means it's time to enter our next level of customization, which is the world of third-party home screen launchers. And if you're into customization, there are really three that stand out from the crowd. Nova Launcher, Smart Launcher, and Hyperion Launcher. 
Nova Launcher is the best for customization, offering just about every single customization feature you could ever want, all within a fairly stock and familiar layout. And if you want a full breakdown of this launcher and its various features, then I created an entire video on the most recent version, which I'll link to up in the cards. Smart Launcher is pretty much just as capable though, just in a slightly different design. And it does depart a little more from the stock default launcher style that most of us are used to, but a lot of users love its style. And I would say that it's not quite as nice in terms of animations compared to Nova Launcher, but it's constantly being updated and is definitely a great alternative. But in all my testing, the best third-party launcher in terms of fluidity, particularly in regards to how it handles animations related to gestural navigation, is a real dark horse, actually, Hyperion Launcher. And this app is very close to the stock look and feel I know so many love. Plus it has all the customization options you could want right in line with Nova and Smart Launcher. But as I said, it feels the smoothest when you're using gestural navigation. Now, I'm not gonna unpack in detail how to use these launchers in this video here, as there are stacks of videos that you can find on YouTube that showcase all of their features. But just to add one more app to this section, if you found yourself loving using any of these third-party launchers, and you're now looking for design inspiration, then look no further than another app of mine, Palette. If you've been around on my channel for a little while now, then there's a good chance that you've already heard me talking about this app. But in short, Palette is filled with over 2,400 custom home screen setups, all vetted by me. And the best part is that as soon as you find a home screen setup that you like the look of, you just tap on it and you'll be redirected to a page filled with every single asset used in that setup, including wallpaper and backup files, so that you can recreate them super quickly as long as you have a little bit of know-how. I've created a bunch of videos showcasing exactly how you can recreate the setups found within Palette, which I'll link to up in the cards. But if you really want to take home screen customization to the next level, but you don't fancy yourself much of a designer, then this app is a must have. And so then we come to our sixth and final level of customization, automation. And for those who are looking to step beyond home screen customization into the world of functionality customization, then this is the level for you. But buckle up because it's going to get a little crazy. Now, if you're looking just to dip your toes into automation, then might I suggest starting with an app like Buzzkill. In short, Buzzkill allows you to customize how your phone handles notifications. So let's say you want to set it up so that you don't receive notifications from social media apps on the weekend between the hours of 9 to 5 p.m. Then you can set up exactly that and Buzzkill will dismiss any of these notifications automatically for you. Or if you want certain notifications to make a sound even when your phone is set to silent, then again, Buzzkill can do exactly that. But if you want to take things even further from there, then you might want to look into the app Automate. This is an app that looks pretty daunting on the surface, which to be fair, it does take a while to get your head around, but with a little bit of digging through the community section, you'll find some really cool automations, like getting your wallpaper to change automatically based on its brightness levels, or if you wanna set your phone's ringer mode to silent when you're actively using it, but then back to loud again when the screen is off, again, that's something that you can set up using Automate. But then if you just want essentially complete control over your phone, automating any little action that you can think of, then you'll probably want to try out MacroDroid. This is a much more user-friendly app than Automate, despite it arguably being more capable. But some examples of how you can use this app include switching on your phone's Bluetooth and starting music playback automatically as soon as you get into your car, or having your phone's Wi-Fi turn on when you're nearby to your house. You can even get the app to automatically press the skip ads button when you're watching YouTube videos or to take a photo using your selfie camera whenever an incorrect pin code is entered. And so, yeah, like I said, if you want your phone to do almost anything you can think of automatically, then this is the app for you. And so there you have it. That is your deep dive into what I consider to be the six levels of Android customization alongside 20 applications that I reckon will help you on your customizing journey. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.